Today's video is sponsored by Tokyo Treat and Sakura Ko. 10 foods that you should try when you visit Japan. What's up you guys? My name is Caitlin and I've lived in Japan for almost four years, which means I've eaten a lot of food here. So I hope today's video gets you really excited for your trip and opens your eyes to different foods and snacks that you can be on the lookout when you're traveling around. Get your notepads out and bring your appetite because it's time to eat. Itadakimasu! Number 10 on our list is taking us to Fukushima Prefecture, to the old postal village town of Ochijuku. As you can tell, there are these beautiful old thatch buildings and it really feels like Japan has just stopped in time. We are headed to one of the restaurants in one of the old buildings to try what they are most famous for. Negi Soba or Green Onion Soba. Now hang on, because there's a slight surprise coming my way. This area is famous for their green onions, so you don't get any silverware. The green onion is your utensil. I got the cold soba, and it's served with the green onion on top. And I'm going to eat it using the green onion. Like a spoon? Mm -hmm. Like like a chopstick? Do I break it? No, no, no. Wait, okay, maybe... I don't know if there's like a technique to this. This is difficult. Muzukashi. Hmm? <laughs> the flavor is absolutely delicious. I'm definitely gonna have struggle eating this. It's gonna take me a long time, but what a cool experience. For number nine, I've taken you guys to one of my favorite destinations, which is Beppu. It is a town that was built on top of natural hot springs. So these are literally hot springs you see coming out of the gutters, the streets. It's a really great place to come and relax, but of course it's a great place to come and eat. Now, if you're any good at foreshadowing, then you probably guessed what we are going to eat. And that is steamed food from the natural hot spring. So there are a few restaurants around town like this where you get to come and you pick out seasonal vegetables, different proteins and things like dumplings. One of the employees will assist you over to the natural hot spring that is outside and they stack your baskets based on how long things take to cook. So things that take longer to cook are stacked on the bottom and things that take less time are stacked on top. You're given a timer and once your timer goes up, you can go and retrieve your food to eat at the table. This is steamed food, so all of the flavoring is predominantly going to come from seasonings on the side, but it still has a unique taste from the natural hot springs. Number eight, we are headed to get something a little bit sweeter in one of my favorite prefectures, Hokkaido. If you don't know, Hokkaido is really famous for their outdoor adventures and excursions. They have an amazing food scene, specifically their dairy products. Just got to Sasaki Parfait Shop. So we're gonna go inside and try some specialty Hokkaido Shime Parfait. It's like this really cool underground restaurant. They do alcohol and shime parfait. These are the parfaits that they have right now. So this one is like a lemon hazelnut. This one's like a mixed fruit parfait. I ordered the caramel pistachio because this one just sounded so good. She said that black one is salt. Oh, oh it's like salt on top. This is the famous Hokkaido shime parfait. And shime means conclusion. So in Hokkaido, the way that they will typically enjoy this is like after dinner or the end of a day. And it's kind of like a nightcap. And yeah, it looks wonderful. They'll enjoy this like after dinner or going out and just something sweet to end the day. This is typically what people in Hokkaido will enjoy. Oh. Um. And every part of it just has such strong flavors that really complement each other. So I can see why this would be the great end to a day. Number seven is a food item that I only recently tried and it's one of my newest obsessions. So if you find yourself in the mountains or in the countryside of Japan, you may just get lucky. Right now we are in Shirakawago and I'm with my friend Linda and we stumbled upon a place that was selling gohe mochi. Time for the gohe mochi. Oh, I'm so excited. 
This is like a mountain food. So when people would go and they wor would work in the mountains, they would build fires and they would like take this for lunch or as a snack on their breaks. So that's how it became like a, I, I keep wondering if you say delicacy, but like a famous food from the area. It's a mountain area, so it makes sense. So it's uh, mochi that's being grilled and mm -hmm. then they put a miso paste, like, like a barbecue. Of, yep. It's basically like barbecued mochi. Mm -hmm but with a miso paste, and this is Linda's first time trying it. Yes. Okay, let's okay. go. Mmm. The sauce is really good, and the mochi is very, very soft and not chewy. So when I tried it for the first time, they're like, no, you like bite the middle, like here. Oh. And your then first like, bite. And so then the sauce, the sauce goes all, all over your face. <laughs> Cheers. I like it. Cheers. I go ahead mochi and aichi and I actually got to cook it myself. And it's so good. So when they told us that they have it here, I was like, Linda, you have to try it. Itadakimasu. Number six is going to be easy for you to find all over Japan as it's seen as something that's like a comfort food and it's really popular with kids. This dish is called omurice, and not only is it an explosion of flavor, but it's such an exciting presentation. It's pretty much what the name says it is, omurice, an omelet and rice. And when it's served to you, every time they should be cutting the omelet and putting your sauce of choice all over the top. This is actually one of my favorite suggestions for travelers because it's really cheap so to order. Good. It's very filling and really flavorful. Today's video is all about food that you can try once you get to Japan. But what about trying Japanese food from the comfort of your own home through snack boxes? I love Tokyo Tree and Sakurako. They're the best Japanese snack boxes on the market. So what's the difference? I always think of Tokyo Tree as like the party snack box because it is jam packed. This box is going to have all of the mainstream popular seasonal snacks that you can find in Japan right now. This month's theme is Japan's best bites and they're covering all the best treats from each season. Who doesn't want to try melon Kit Kats and a Mito style udon? The other day I saw heart shaped blueberry pocky so I'm really excited to see that they're in this month's box. They're so cute. Let's oh see God, how they taste. So I can't wait to try this Tsubumi orange juice with orange brains. I'm not usually one for pulp because I don't like when it's stringy. This is like the chewy juicy parts of the pulp. I'm a fan. Sakura Ko is unique because they focus on supporting Japan's local family-owned businesses and often partner with different prefectures. This month's theme is Taste of Japan, where we're eating our way through the best of Japan's 47 prefectures. Every Sakura Ko box comes with its own homeware item, and this month it's a kanji side dish. I'm so excited to try Yatsuhashi. This is a famous confectionery treat from Kyoto. And when you stack them like this, they look like the roofing on traditional Japanese buildings and homes. Oh. Mm -hmm. The cinnamon in these is actually spicy, like the actual spice cinnamon. And they're crunchy, like the best kind of waffle cone, to be quite honest. These would be like the perfect scoopers for ice cream. Why would you wait to get to Japan to taste Japan? You can use my code ATLAS in the link in my description to get $5 off your first Sakurako or Tokyo treat box. Number five, we have made it to Ichidan, which might ruffle a few feathers for anyone who's been to Japan because this is a chain ramen restaurant. And of course there are plenty of amazing small businesses that you should go to, but I have my reasoning, so give me a second to explain. Ichiran offers you a very unique Japanese style dining experience. This is not where you wanna go if you plan to socialize with friends because every seat is bar style seating and private. 
Why I like Ichiran and recommend it to foreigners is because the food is predictable and you are given the opportunity to order your own food and customize it. So if you don't know Japanese, that can definitely propose a language barrier and some struggles while going out to eat. So I personally love Ichiran. I think it totally makes my list and you can find it in a lot of big cities and the food, it never misses, especially because you can order it exactly how you want it. Did you know that Kyoto is famous for their tofu? I had no idea and when I was exploring the bamboo forest with my friend Linda, we went to a restaurant called Yutofu Sagano. And I still think about this dining experience in the old Japanese tea house overlooking the garden with blooming sakura trees and the food was just absolutely insane. Like I I cannot express how much I still think about this meal. I'm not Typically a huge tofu person, but this meal totally changed my mind about that. And what's great about it is it is a set menu, so there's no need to go into it and feel overwhelmed trying to make decisions. You can just go and enjoy. Trust me on this one. If you don't like tofu, this will turn you into a tofu believer. Since we're already in Kyoto, let's head over to Nishiki Market to try number three, Kai. This is one of Nishiki Market and Kyoto's most famous street food items. It is baby octopus stuffed with a boiled quail egg. I've been to Kyoto many times and it took me a few visits before I got the courage to try it myself. And it's a really famous street food here at Nishiki Market. So I'm gonna try it for the first time. I asked her for a small one because I'm really scared. <laughs> Tadakimasu! Did I do the whole thing? Cold. Oishi! Mmm! It kind of has like a soy shoyu. Shoyu? Soyu mm. sauce. Soy sauce. Yeah. yeah, it's like a soy sauce flavor. So. Mm. My favorite Japanese food of all time, it has changed my life since I've had it, is okonomiyaki, specifically Hiroshima style. So Hiroshima style is layered, Osaka style I believe is mixed, and there's always a fun argument on who makes the better version. Now okonomiyaki is teppanyaki, it's like a crepe layered with noodles, cabbage, vegetables, egg, um, different kinds of proteins, whatever you want. I prefer the classic style, and this is just so good because it's really filling when you're traveling it's really cheap and affordable and it just tastes amazing the only thing I don't like about okonomiyaki is that when you go to the restaurants and dine inside you will smell so bad like your hair your clothes everything but I promise it is so worth it try it and let me know what you guys think we have finally made it to number one but this isn't my top choice I just needed and wanted 10 foods to suggest to you. We are in Hakone, specifically Owakudani, which is just a really cool sightseeing place and it's near Tokyo, but they're known for having black themed food because of the volcanoes and the volcanic rock. The main dish I came here to try was this black ramen noodle dish. I got the spicy one. They also have it not spicy. This was a really fun treat to try just because it was so cool looking. I also got their ice cream that is black vanilla. There's a few different vendors that sell this over here. It tastes like vanilla, but better. Like it has like a very specific taste to it that I cannot put my finger on, but it's so good as well. Mm. Don't eat this. And then like talk to people. <laughs> And then I really had to come and get the Owakudani black hell eggs because they're just so freaking cool looking. So these are just regular chicken eggs, but they have been boiled in like the sulfur water. Um, they are the Kudo Tamago. You have to buy them in a set of five. You can't buy just one. It's 500 yen. Wow, oh, it's hot. The shell, which I don't know why I wasn't expecting that. And it's actually really cold up here, so it's like double as a mitts. So let's try it. 
to peel them. I read online that if you eat one of these, it adds seven years to your life. Um, but they don't recommend eating more than two at a time. It's actually just like a regular egg now that the shell's gone. Itadakimasu. Mm. They're very good boiled eggs. I have no, no regrets. You should still come and get them. I'd love to know which of these 10 food items you're most excited to try when you come visit Japan. Until then, thanks for watching today's video. Make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!